morning. We're starting Mass in a few moments. Our opening hymn will be, uh, We Have Been Told, it's on page 6 in the bulletin. and ask the Lord to forgive us with his great mercy.
Lord Jesus, you are the giver of life, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you formed us in the womb of our mothers, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to everlasting life with you, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who consoled the sorrowful and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son Augustine, grant us through his intercession of them both that we may bitterly regret our sins and find the grace of your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Would have stayed away and not let his house be broken into. 
so too you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and prudent servant, whom the Master has put in charge of his household to distribute, their, to, distribute to them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on his arrival finds doing so. Amen, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and eat and drink with drunkards, the dr servant's master will come on an unexpected day, and at an unknown hour, and will punish him severely. And assign him, assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, so often when we talk about the word fidelity and faithfulness, we think of our part. For example, marriage. You stand at the altar. I take you to be my spouse. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and bad, in sickness and in health, in love and honor you all the days of my life. And if I have to keep that vow, and if you promise to keep that vow, and a lot of times we focus on faithful or unfaithful, even a little things, we want to always remain faithful, right? Have I been faithful in being a priest? Right? And we focus so much on our part that we forget about the other part. And there's this one phrase, three words of Paul, God is faithful. God is faithful. And that's how we have to understand what a covenant is. A covenant is a relationship of vowing and promising that we make between people and with God, and it's usually signed with blood. The sign of the power of the covenant is the blood, right? This is my blood poured out for you, the new and eternal covenant. I think that's a great reminder for us today What's our part in our relationship with God? What's our part? It's not that big of a part. You know, God is faithful. God's the one who makes you faithful. God's the one who moves you to do good and love. God's the one that works in you when you feel good. God is the one at the moment of decision whether you remain faithful or not, he inspires you, strengthens you to do that. And if we don't respond to those promptings, he still remains faithful to us. And that's what allows us to approach him again. Do we fail sometimes? Are there little infidelities that we have with the Lord and with others? Yeah, it's called sin. But he never changes his commitment to us. He never changes that. So that's the God that St. Monica prayed to. Monica, who had her own difficulties. Did you know that most likely St. Monica was an alcoholic? How many of you knew that? There's a scene in the confessions that when they were trying to find Monica in the house, where did they find her? They found her in the, in the wine cellar. You know? She had to go through her own conversion. She married a pagan man. I think at the end of his life, he became a uh, Christian. Uh, it was kind of probably not the best of marriages that she was a part of. So what's the first thing you do? I need a drink to, to get through this thing, right? But she had her own conversion. And she saw her son wander away at the age of 16 and take a concubine and have a child out of wedlock, Augustine. Talk about Saint Augustine. Right? Lost, but God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Lord, take care of Augustine. Lord, bring him to the truth. 
Lord, bring him to me, Lord, bring him to me. Not to speak. Not to speak. She's probably a Navy mother a little bit. She she followed Augustine all the way to Carthage, and then Augustine left her high and dry in Carthage. And she he was trying to get to Rome to get away from her. You know. So was it a most perfect relationship there? Not really. But at the end of their life, they loved each other. Her one desire was that he would become Catholic. And she was able to share that with Augustine at the end of her life. That's the only reason why I wanted to live, was that he would become a Catholic. Imagine Augustine standing there. Wow. That's how much you love him. God is faithful. God is faithful. Our part is to be open to him. That's our part. That's what it means to live the life of grace. Life of not holy men. But taking the hard effort to be open to God. Because there's this tendency in us not to be open to Him. And uh, that's the hard work of the spiritual life. So may St. Monica help us to see how faithful God is in our lives. Amen. Let's stand now and for our petitions. St. Monica's holiness shines as a light among women. Through her intercession, let us pray in faith. Lift up the lowly, Lord, for all Christians married to non-believers, as St. Monica was. Keep them firm in faith and make them strong in holiness. We pray to the Lord. For all parents who seek to raise their children in the faith of Jesus Christ, grant that their love may bear fruit we pray to the Lord. For all who devote themselves to a life of prayer and good works, sustain them in zeal and contentment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for our world and all the troubles that are going about it. How we can't get along with one another. May the end of hatred and violence be granted, O Lord. Pray for all those who are affected by natural disasters of any kind. We pray for, for rain, O oh Lord, please grant us rain for our crops. Uh, please protect all our fellow citizens in southern United States by Texas and Louisiana as the hurricane comes. And we pray for all our fellow citizens in California who are in the midst of more wildfires. Lord, sustain us in our suffering. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are affected by the pandemic, for all essential workers who work in hospitals and nursing homes who feel overworked or overburdened, for families who cannot see their loved ones, for teachers, administrators, and those involved in anything of our schools, that they may be sustained as they seek to teach in a very different, different year. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the faithful departed today. We pray for Karen Skirpak and the living and deceased members of the Paul Hackett family. May they and all the faithful departed may see the face of God. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all wandering children of mothers and fathers uh, who have wandered away from the faith, that we may have the same confidence that St. Monica had in the Lord's faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, of all kindness, strength of, strength of those who weep, you gathered up the love of St. Monica's tears for the conversion of her son Augustine. Through the power of their prayer, grant to us all the grace to know how to weep for our sins, and to seek out those who stray with our prayers, and to come before you as one in the kingdom, one for us by your Son, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness 
we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate Blessed Saint Monica, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, but with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The kingdom of heaven is like a virgin who travels in search of fine pearls, and who on finding one of great price, sold everything and bought it. For those watching online, we have our active spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, Almighty God, on this feast day of blessed Saint Monica, that we may ever be fervent with holy desires and abound in good works. Through Christ our Lord. So tomorrow we'll have morning mass again with holy hour. The next week we start our uh, new daily mass schedule. So it's Tuesday evenings, 5.45 in Festina. Wednesday, Austin, 9 a.m. Thursday, Spillville, 9 a.m. And then here on Fridays at the same 8.15 in the morning. Before the Tuesday through Thursday, there'll be a holy hour. 7.45 in the morning on Wednesdays and Thursdays. 7.45 to 8.45 and then Mass. And then over at uh, Festina, 4.30 to 5.30 in the middle of Mass. Okay? And we won't change it. Okay? So have a good day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. What's that? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah.